that again? Read that part again. <clears throat> and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. All right, so the Bible says that the fear of God is taught by the precept of men. That's right. We haven't learned to fear God by God's standard. Right. We've learned to fear God by man's standard. That's right. That's right. And woman's standard, too. And society's standard. Whatever's common amongst society, we've learned to accept to be normal. And what has it done? It's desensitized us to what God deems to be evil. All right? I'm going to read another scripture. Give me Isaiah 5 and 20. What, what I wanted to do was go back to the point my brother was making about, um, you said you work at Walmart. He said it's child pornography all over Walmart. And nobody ever noticed it. We never saw that this... What this image that I'm seeing right here, this bathing suit, is not an image that should be acceptable. But I'm going to show you how the uh, the fear toward God is taught by the precept of men based on the Bible. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 5 and verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good. You see that, my sisters? The Bible says, woe unto them that call evil good. So with certain people that say, you know what? It's going to be a good idea for us to, uh, let's take a naked five-year-old, put it on a billboard, and just call it a swimsuit. Let's call it a swimsuit. And it's cool as long as as long as they swim in at the swimming pool, as long as they go into the beach, it's acceptable. But if uh, we were just walking down the mall, is that still acceptable? It wouldn't be acceptable at all if I was walking down the mall and my five-year-old girl was wearing her underwear. That's right. But if I bring her out, but if I bring her five miles down to the road to some sand and some water, now it's acceptable for her to be naked. You know. Who said that? Who 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 established that? No, the Bible says that the fear toward God is taught by the precept of men. God's standard doesn't change whether you're standing in front of some sand or you're standing in front of some bricks. He don't care about that. Bring it out. God does not care what environment you're in. He says, keep my laws, keep my statutes, right. keep my commandments. Right. Read what you got. Woe unto them that call evil good Read. and good evil. Uh -huh. They put darkness for light uh -huh. and light for darkness. They put bitter for sweet. They put bitter for sweet. The things God said are nasty, they say these things are good. That's right. That's the right. things that God said are good, they said, nah, those things are nasty. Don't worry about that. Give me uh give me Sirach. I'm sorry, give me uh yeah, give me Sirach 15 and 20. I just had a couple of scriptures. Mike, don't go too far. Don't go too far. Yes, sir. Sirach chapter 15, verse 20. Because this type of stuff, it, it makes me upset. That's right. When I look back on how I was raised here in America, it shows me that everything that I was taught was contrary to God. And when I was raised in church, they always talked about this uh, this big scary person that was going to be born one day called the Antichrist. Who's heard of you, you, Anybody heard of the Antichrist? Sister, my brother over there, y'all heard of the Antichrist? What is, what is it? What's, your, what's everybody's understanding of Antichrist? What, what is the Antichrist? Okay, that's, that's great. I love that. I love that. Is that y'all's uh, understanding as well? Say it again. The mark of the beast. Okay. Right. So so what, what we'll understand according to the Bible, the society that we've been raised in is anti-Christ. Everything about this place here that we live in is anti-Christ. Right? Because it goes against the will of God, which is what? God's what? God's commandments. That's exactly right. That's, that's exactly right. His laws, his statutes, and commandments. Read what you got. The book of Sirach, chapter 15 and verse 20. Uh -huh. He hath commanded no man to do wickedly. The Bible says God has commanded no man to do wickedly. Which means what? If it's unacceptable for my little girl to be walking around in her underwear at, in the mall, then guess what? It's unacceptable for her to be out here on the sand naked too. Right. It's unacceptable for her to be out here naked too. If it's not acceptable for me to be butt naked walking... Uh, into the car dealership to go buy a car, why is it acceptable for me to come out here on the sand button? That's right. That's right. Read that again. He has commanded no man to do wickedly. God commanded no man to do wickedly. God didn't give anybody the license to come out here and be butt naked, be immodest, and entice your brothers and sisters right. into their lust. Right. Read what you got. Neither has he given any man license to sin. Neither has he given any man license to sin. Who out here knows that it's a sin to celebrate Christmas? Okay, all right, all right. What does that mean? That means of course, or that means I didn't know? Not, not every holiday. 
Every holiday that America has set up for you to celebrate is pagan. But did you did you know, my sister, God has given you holidays that he commanded you to celebrate and nobody taught you how to celebrate? Did you know that? Feast of Tabernacles, that's one of the holidays. Give me another. The Feast of Unleavened Bread, also called the Passover. All right. All right. Those are the holidays that we're supposed to be celebrating. All praises to the most high. Now, now, sister, I know we went over the pants earlier. You understand you're not supposed to wear pants? So you understand that? Well, why you got them on, sister? Huh? You're a sinner? You have sinned or you're a sinner? Okay. What does it mean to repent, my sister? Okay. Okay, so you know you got to repent from wearing pants. Okay, all praises, sister. You got you got to do that because you you know a lot, right? You know, you, you're quoting all high holy days. You're in agreement that God didn't give us license to sin, but you're walking around with a sin license right now. You know what that sin license is? That No, that sin license is the outfit that you're wearing. Right? Yeah, the, yeah the, the wages the wages of that sin is death, my sister. So you got to repent from that. Give me Matthew 4 and 17. Because anytime we ask our brothers or our sisters about sin, there's always some form of license that they give us to justify why they're sinning. No, everybody justifies their sin. I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you an example. I tell a brother, hey, man, the Bible says that you can't celebrate Christmas. What does the brother say? Oh, I do it for who? The kids. The kids. That's that's what? That's the license to sin, right? Who gave you that license to sin? You did. The precept of men did. God didn't give you that license to sin. You gave that yourself. All right? I ask a sister, sister, why are you naked? Sister, why do I see your thighs? I don't want to see your thighs, sister. God wants you to dress modestly. What is a sister going to tell me? Oh, it's what? Nah, come on, sister. Would you dress like that in December? No, it's June, right? What do, the, what do people say on why they dress immodestly during the summertime? It, because it's what outside? It's hot outside. There's the license to sin. There's the license to sin. But God didn't give you that license to sin. God told you to be modest. God told you to be modest and teach your daughters to be modest. Right? And that's going to keep the whoredom to be away from the community. Right? And that's how you love your neighbor as yourself, right? Because it's 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 evil for me to look at a woman to lust after her, right? That's what Christ told me. So if my sister sees me as a brother, if, if my sister sees me as a brother, I'm a married man. I'm committed to my wife, right? If if you love me and you love my wife, why would you even create an opportunity for me to look you up and down? If you really love me as a brother. If you really love me as a brother, you wouldn't create an opportunity for me to even think about sinning against my wife, to breaking God's commandments. Give me a, uh, what you hold? Read what you got. The book of Matthew chapter 4 and verse 17. Uh -huh. From that time, Jesus began to preach. So this is Jesus' message to all the people that will receive it. Read. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Read. repent. Do what? Repent. Uh -huh. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So the kingdom of heaven is at hand for all of my sisters that will repent. But you got to realize that the things that they taught you here in America are anti-Christ. The way that you dress is anti-Christ. The way that you eat is anti-Christ. The way that relationships begin is anti-Christ. The days that you celebrate are anti-Christ. Christ came to leave you an example on how, to, how you should live, how you should eat, how you should act. How you should treat each other, right? We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling, 
These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I U I C, we deliver the truth.